Mm. I feel like that is strong. I think I could charge more for my photography work if I have a moustache, though, to be honest with you. Hello. So I recently took a trip to the Lake District and I took two film cameras with me uh, because variety is the spice of life and all that. Uh, I took a Canon AF35M Mark II and a Canon AE1. I actually managed to break one of these cameras and totally f up with the other one, so uh, that's good. We do have photos and one of them in particular is hands down like top three film photos that I've ever taken. Mm, strong. So before we get into the photos, let's talk a little bit about the cameras because they're two very, very different cameras. So first up, we have the Canon AF35M Mark II. This is a point and shoot camera. It's got a 38 millimeter focal length and it's got this cool little flashy boy built into the camera, which is basically uh, one of the things that helps give point and shoot film photos that really nostalgic disposable camera feel. You just set your ISO on this little dial down here and then that's pretty much it. It's a point and shoot. So you point it, you shoot it. Jobs are good in. So this camera is a Canon AE1. It's fully manual um, and kind of the exact opposite of the point and shoot. Um, I put a 28 millimeter lens on this because uh, it's very, very close to 24 millimeters, which is my go-to for like work stuff. Uh, so it feels nice and familiar to me. It's got a built-in light meter as well, which is super, super helpful. And with it being fully manual, it's cool because um, you can basically um, just tell that little robot inside the camera to get um, and then just ruin your own photos, which is Top draw. So we started our trip by driving up to Bowness, which is on Lake Windermere, which is super nice. Uh, it's an awesome spot. You've got like loads of boats and stuff like that. And more importantly, you've got very, very aggressive swans. They provide excellent entertainment, especially when people try and like swan through their gaff, <laughs> pun intended, uh, like Conor McGregor on his way down to the octagon and they just get absolutely mugged by these swans. It's so good. There's also this dope old timey toy shop there uh, and they have this giant T-Rex and uh, it's not for sale, unfortunately, um, but mark my words, I'm saying this on the record, uh, it will be in my possession uh, one day. And I appreciate that that sounds a little bit shoplifty um, and that kind of is because it is, I will steal it if necessary. So after I smashed an absolutely top draw bag of chippy chips, uh, we moved on. We went to our hotel for the night, so we drove over the Allswater Pass to get to Penrith. The Allswater Pass is through like these dope mountains and like all windy roads and stuff like that. And you might actually recognize it from one of my old camcorder videos. Uh, we come here quite a bit, it's a, it's a dope spot. So we got to Penrith, uh, checked into our hotel, and then we nipped to a nearby Weatherspoons for tea. I had a excellent vegetarian meal. Uh, it's surprising man Weatherspoons have like really good veggie meal options it's just a shame that the guy who like owns it all is an absolute all operators are busy at this time please hold but hey at least they know their way around the stick of halloumi after eating my weight in halloumi cheese i decided that i would go and take some like nighttimey photos around penrith and i headed to my favorite spot in the town which is this absolutely sick old timey cinema so this is the alhambra cinema um it's so dope like it's really old timey, like it's got the curtains across the screens and stuff like that. And a few years back, we went to see a Halloween movie here on Halloween. And hearing like John Carpenter's like opening Halloween theme music in like an old cinema was just, oh, so, so dope. So yeah, if you ever happen to pass the area, I fully recommend this cinema, especially if like me, you're into like vibey old shit. It's so, so good. It's everything you'd expect it to be and more. This is just a nice shop window that I stumbled upon while I was perusing the mean streets of Penrith in the dead of the night. So the next day we headed on to the tree house that we were staying in. Uh, very, very dope spot. We've been here a bunch of times. Lots of very nice smelling wood. I appreciate that that's a very strange thing to say out loud. Uh, but yeah, it's got like a private hot tub on the deck. It's got like a pool table, uh, all that cool stuff, like a sauna. And just, yeah, it's an absolutely outrageous vibe. So I thought it'd be cool to shoot some shots on film of the treehouse at night because they've got these really cool lights and it's super dark in the forest so like yeah that cool sort of contrast of the light and the dark just looks vibey so I thought I'd shoot some stuff at night and um, so this was the first photo remember this photo we'll come back to it um, because yeah I, I kind of wanted to take it a little bit further and it resulted in my favorite hands down favorite photo from this trip so we'll come back to that at the end because it was shot on the last night i think it was the last photo i took actually so uh, yeah we'll come back to that one so we went bowling and i refused to wear these sweaty festering bowling alley shoes and i stand by it mate they are so gross i appreciate that like bowling alley shoes are supposed to stop me from slipping over and stuff like that but if i fell over in a bowling alley and i broke every bone in my body and i died my last thought would be at least i'm not wearing bowling shoes 
So this is a scenario where having something manual like a Canon A1 really comes in handy because you can basically just override the camera's common sense uh, and set the shutter speed like super low so you can at least come away with a photo. Uh, I think the motion blur is cool in these kind of photos where there's something moving and stuff like that um, because yeah, I think it just adds to it adds to the photo. I really like these, isn't they cool? So yeah, let's get to my favourite shot from the trip. I think uh, this was the last photo that I took. It was taken the night before we left. Um, and yeah, I just love everything about this photo. I really wanted like a banger exterior photo with this treehouse because you had these like super warm orange lights and then just darkness and it created this cool contrast um so no flash or anything like that i just wanted it to be really warm and i wanted the shadows and stuff to be super messy and horrible uh, and film pulls through like look at all the imperfections like the dirt and like little i'm gonna get some hair on there some little gritty bits and uh, yeah like the grain and like the shadows and like the weird like color stuff going on i just love it it's just mm, this is it this is this is the vibe so yeah very strong really stoked on this one good times Good times. So at the top of the video, I mentioned breaking one of these cameras uh, and it was this one, the AF35M Mark II. I was rewinding the film and it just pieced out, like totally broke, like completely broke. It just wouldn't do anything. There's no manual rewind on these cameras. So like my roll of film was just stuck in here. But thanks to my local camera shop, I went in and uh, they just popped it open in a dark room and wrestled it out and it was all good. So shout out Cambrian Photography. Legends, I tell you. Uh, so yeah, this camera is absolutely f I also mentioned at the top of the video that I f up with the other camera. That was this one. What happened was I loaded the film, rolled it on, started shooting and instantly knew something was wrong. Uh, and I realized that I'd loaded it in a rush and I hadn't checked that the leader had like tucked into the little slot in the back here. Do you know the little slot you have that kind of pulls it round? You've got the notches and the slot, you know, the, the old notch and slot combination. I'm gonna stop saying notch and slot because it just sounds really weird. I don't like how it feels in my mouth. But yeah, so what I did was every photo I took on this that I really liked, I took on the point and shoot as well. And it's a good job I did because when I started to rewind this film, uh, there was basically nothing in there. It like rewound in like seconds. Uh, and I knew I hadn't shot any photos. So I'll just reshoot that roll of film because uh, film is very, very expensive at the moment, if you haven't heard. I'm pretty sure a roll of portrait 800, 35mm now probably costs more than my first car did. So, yeah, Sam, what time to be alive? Long live Brexit and all that. So there we have it. Thanks for checking out the video. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like it. And if you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel for more stuff like this. Um, very casual chat about film photography, photography, videography. I'm probably, I am planning this year to get into more stuff around the business. If you don't know, I... I'm a full-time photographer and videographer and I run Rad to the Photo Video, that's how I make a living. Um, and yeah, I wanna make more stuff about like the business side of photography because what I learned really early on is that a lot of what people tell you is absolute bollocks. Um, <laughs> and yeah, there's just so much bad, bad old advice kicking about that I wanna get into like what it's really like, like what's, hard, what's actually hard about it and what's a lot easier than people say. It is, if that makes sense. But anyway, yeah, uh, long story short, if you're into any of that, consider subscribing to the channel. Or don't, I can't tell you what to do. I'm not the Prime Minister, sadly. Um, so I can't, like, throw parties in lockdowns and get away with it and stuff. But, you know, such is life. Uh, anyway, it's been real. Thanks for coming to hang out. Hopefully I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>